Well, I'm sure many of you are aware of the announcement from CFAI about the number of enhancements that they've made, uh, with two of them that I think are probably the most exciting ones. I think they're excited about all six, but I'm really excited about uh, two of them. So I'm going to go through all six of them. Uh, if you hover your mouse on the video on the timeline, you'll see that it's broken down into chapters. So you can just um, click on the chapter that's more interesting to you or the one that you uh, want to see. When I get to the explanation of uh, the hands-on learning, the uh, practical skills module, uh, I'll explain what we're doing in our CFA program uh, for what we offer. I shouldn't call it our CFA program, our CFA uh, subscription. There we go. That's a better word for it. Uh, what we're doing in there to match uh, what they're doing here. And it's something that we've had in development for some time. Um, so I'll explain that. But let's begin with the first one, expanded eligibility. Let's see what that's about. And most of the good stuff is down here in the question and answer. So it gives you a little, uh, a little blurb up here of what this is about, but it doesn't give a lot of information. You're kind of left with a lot of questions after that. Uh, there is a video, if you prefer a video, or if you just want to get right to the point, when can I take it? Uh, nice short answers. Uh, as long as you're within 23 months of graduation, so that's basically, you know, in two years or somewhat less than two years, I'll graduate. I'm ready to take level one. Uh, how much study time is involved? We don't need to get there. Is there a best time? We don't need that. If I pass level one while I'm in college, when can I move on to the level two? Uh, and as long as you graduate before uh, your level two exam. So you may register and start studying for level two exam while you are still at university but you must have received your undergraduate degree before your level two exam date. So if it's September and you know you're going to be graduating uh, in April, you can uh, select the May date, although it says you must receive your undergraduate degree. Usually convocation is sometime in June or July. So does that mean after you have your exam result, you'll know whether you graduate, whether you're going to graduate or not in May. I wonder if that is sufficient to demonstrate that you are going to be graduating, that you are going to be uh, uh, convocating in June or July, or if you actually have to wear the black robes and the square hat and, and, and uh, take that fake piece of paper, because it is a fake piece of paper they give you when you step up there. Um, I wonder, that's a good question to ask them. But you must graduate, you must have your undergraduate degree before your level two exam. So the safest thing would be an August or November window uh, there. Uh, how often can I attempt uh, the exam? Um, you can't take them in consecutive windows. So if you uh, have a February exam, you can't then take a May exam. If you have a May exam, you can't take an August. You have to skip one of the windows. Um, six months apart at least, uh, a maximum of six attempts uh, for each level. I would say this, if, if you're on your third attempt, there's something wrong. There's something wrong in your process and you need to speak with someone uh, because it shouldn't take six attempts. If you've um, attended a university, that means you got in. means you have the merit. You got in. If you graduated, it clearly means you have the merit. This is not more difficult than that. The big thing about this is it's self-study and that's where a lot of people break down is in that self-study because you have to police yourself. There are no due dates. There's one date, do or die. So you don't get to build your grade through the semester. There is no hard date on the calendar, six or seven deliverables where uh, it keeps you honest. <laughs> You're basically your own police officer. That's the biggest uh, hurdle is the self-study part. So if you failed, you know, once, that's okay. Give yourself a break. Everybody mis, uh, 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 sort of miscalculates the amount of time necessary to get this done. But if you've uh, failed three times, um, it's not because you lack the merit or the ability to do it. There's just something wrong in your approach. So at that point, it's worth talking to somebody who's gone through it and saying, well, what am I doing that I could be doing better? Uh, and we do have that available. We have uh, academic counseling uh, available at really reduced rates. You can spend an hour uh, with uh, a charter holder 
who has just recently been through it, not somebody that's been through it, you know, 20 years ago when it was different, but has recently been through it, uh, that you can then say, but I did this, I did this, I did that, and they can uh, sort of help you uh, guide and, uh, you know, maybe highlight where it is uh, that, that you may be going uh, wrong in your process of, of getting there. Okay, let's uh, go look at the next one. All right, number two, hands-on learning, the practical skills module. This one, I think, is right on target. This one's absolutely exciting, so let's have a look at this one. And we can skip all of this stuff. Let's just go down to the topics covered. And um, it's for 2024. So mid-May, uh, registration opens for level one. We Not even worth talking about level three because there are no practical skills modules for level three for 2024. We'll see... Uh, when they'll be available for level three. But if you're moving into level three in 2024, this is this is not on your dinner plate. Uh, I believe that all of these modules will be made available at some point uh, for the continuing education credits. So uh, it's not as if, oh, you're going to miss all of that and never get the benefit of it. I think at some point it's going to be made available there. But this is for 2024. We only really have to talk about mid-May for uh, level one. This is for the February exam. And that's the only one that'll be available mid-May, but it'll be for all all exams, every level one candidate for 2024. It just initially, only the February exam will be available for registration. Financial modeling or Python programming fundamentals. Um, you do have to do one. You can do both, but you can't not do any of them. You must do one um, or you don't get your exam results. Now you can, if you register early, uh, beginning of, uh, you know, when May, uh, mid-May rolls around, uh, a couple of benefits there. You're going to get the lower price, so why would you wait? If you're going, if you're going to register anyways, why would you wait? Why would you willingly pay more and give yourself less time? Think about mid-May. You have uh, an expenditure to make. That gives you uh, some time to get one of these modules out of the way very quickly. <clears throat> Take a couple of weeks and uh, knock one out. Then study for your level one exam, write it in February, and then knock out the second module. I strongly recommend you do both. I can't see how you could choose between them. Uh, I would, I would, if it were me, I would be doing both. Uh, but it, 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 to do that, you, you do have to manage your time. Mid-May, register, save yourself some money by, by registering early, and knock out one of these modules. Uh, at level two, uh, notice here the uh, level, uh, here it is, level one Python programming fundamentals follows through to level two. So in sometime in mid-August, I believe, I'm not sure the exact date, <clears throat> the level two May window will be open for registration. If you are registering for that, you must do one of the modules. Now, I don't know when they say you must do one, I don't know if it's analyst skills or Python and then this programming fundamentals is just provided to you or if this actually counts as one of them I don't know although I don't know why you would not do all three I really don't know why um, it says here if not taken at level one so you have the Python programming if not taken at level one then you can go on to Python data science and AI uh, a little bit further and then you have analyst skills what I don't see is financial modeling which is available uh, to level one candidates I don't see it at level two I really would like to see it there. I, I, I really think it would be important to have it there, but it's just at level one. I don't know if they're going to eventually make it available at level two. It seems to me that if you were uh, registering for level two for May of 2024 and you looked at financial modeling at level one and you don't see it at level two, that it would kind of be a letdown like, oh, can't I get it? I think you would want it. So if somebody from CFAI is out there, maybe they can answer in the comment section. Uh, whether or not level twos for May of 2024 will have access to that uh, practical module. And I think you can still make it that, listen, for level two, you have to do analyst skills or Python. You have to do one of those two, but we'll make all four available to you. Financial modeling, uh, the uh, fundamentals, the analyst skills, and the advanced Python. We'll make all four available to you. You must do one of these two, but I'd hate to see this go undone. Uh, really just for missing one year. So let's nudge this. Let's see if we can't nudge this into level two as well. All right. Let's uh, look at some of the Q&As. <clears throat> Will the PSM 
be a required element of the CFA program? Yes. Yes. Don't make it optional. Make it mandatory. Yes. But it's not testable on the exam. So that should take some stress off. But it still must be done. Candidates must complete the standard exam and one PSM at each level in order to receive their exam result. The practical skills module requirement will be added for level one candidates beginning with the February 2024 exam and for level two candidates in August when registration opens for May of 2024. PSMs for level three will be added for 2025 exams. So if you're a level three candidate and you're going to be writing in the 2024 exam windows, you have no PSM. Now, if you're looking at all this and saying, oh, come on, can't I get access to it as well? I don't know the answer to that. That is a question for a CFAI. And it would be, I think, um, beneficial if they did open it up for you at level three, but it's not required. It's just there if you want it. Um, I do believe, as I uh, said earlier, that they are going to make this available I think they're going to make it, why wouldn't they? I think they're going to make it available for uh, previous candidates uh, as part of the continuing education requirements that you have to do. Uh, I think, I think. It doesn't say anything here, but I think, but again, why wouldn't they? Uh, what do candidates need to do in order to complete? A standalone module contains 10 to 15 hours of content, which candidates must advance through in order to complete each one, aided by videos, questions, and guided practice. It is not graded, nor will questions about it appear on the exam. You just got to get through it. Uh, but then again, why wouldn't you want to, right? Uh, does it matter when I do the PSM? This is important too. Uh, because the material is separate from the curriculum being studied, there is no best time. It can be done right after a registration in the middle of your studies or after you have taken your exam. It must be completed by the results release date in order to get your result that day. This is a good question. If I fail the exam, do I still have to do the PSM? Well, you know, use some logic here. We don't even need the answer. We could use some logic. You can't get your results until you do the PSM, so how do you know you failed? So the answer to that is going to be yes, but you must complete the PSM. To get your exam result only one PSM PSM is required at each level so if you fail the exam and have to repeat your completed PSM will remain in your record and you will not have to complete another one until you advance to the next level so you got to do one so if it's your first time writing level one in February of 2024 you got to do one otherwise you don't get your result you get your result uh, you didn't make it you don't have to do the PSM again you just have to do the level one exam again. You know, you can't take it for, for May, but you sign up for August. Six months is all you need at that point because, heck, you're almost, you're almost there. Uh, but you don't have to do the PSM again. It's already done. Um, how can I decide which PSM is right for me? I don't think we need to read that. I, I myself would take them both. I, 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 would feel, I would feel sort of deficient by, not, by choosing one and not taking another. It would be like, well, why can't I do both, right? Can I complete more than one PSM? Yes. Only one is required. You may complete any topic that are offered at your level. Uh, what if I change my mind about the PSM I choose? Uh, you can stop and switch to another one. The only requirement is that one of them uh, is completed. And I thought this was a good question too. What if I miss the deadline? Um, an extension of 90 days, and I don't like this word, may, may be granted for you to complete the PSM. What does that mean it may? That doesn't mean it will. May is like, well, it it may be. It's kind of like, hey, you know, Mom, are we going to the carnival this weekend? Maybe. Well, maybe is not an answer, right? It may be granted for you to complete the PSM. Upon completion, your results will be released to you. So I'm not sure what, what it means by it may be granted. Again, if anyone from CFAI is listening, if you can expand on the word may. It's only three letters, but so much is smuggled in behind that word. It may be granted. So, um, before we go on to the next one, let me show you uh, what we're doing at markmeldrum.com uh, in conjunction with, with this stuff here. Okay, when you get to markmeldrum.com, you get to the landing page. You just have to scroll down and you'll see the 2023 uh, Level 1 packages here. And uh, as soon as uh, we can start listing the 2024s, they'll be in the drop-down menu as well. We've introduced a new option, and this is available at 2023 uh, package, the Full Access Plus. 
which has everything that Full Access does, but you get the Applied series uh, in there as well, and I'll uh, show you what uh, practical applications we're putting in uh, to the Applied series uh, at the same time. Uh, so um, you get your archive, uh, you get the ar every, everything that goes with the uh, Full Access you get over here. The question uh, that uh, we've had is, well, what happens to the Applied series after the exam? This is really two components in here. You have your full access uh, for whatever level, level one, two, and three, uh, and the regular uh, um, uh, process applies to that, as it always has, is that you have access up until the exam date. After the exam date, you get this. You get an archive. So all the videos uh, get into the archive, and you can access the archive through the app so that when you move to the next level, you still have the previous level's videos if you need to refer back to something. Also, all of our subscriptions are one fee to pass, which means you only pay once and you never pay again uh, for that particular level. For the applied series, there is no expiration. So if you uh, picked up a level one uh, full access plus, when you move to level two, there's no point in buying you in buying the level two full access plus because you already have the applied series. Then you'd only uh, buy the full access for level two and full access for level three because the applied series component of the subscription doesn't doesn't expire. So we have that. Let's have a look at uh, what we're doing uh, on um, for the applied series. Okay, so as I said on the uh, previous screen, if you uh, have the applied series, there is no expiration date uh, on that. Uh, if you are picking up the CFA Plus subscription, you're getting the CFA content and the applied series at the same time. So you'll have the CFA content up to the exam date. It'll be archived after that, but the applied series continues uh, continues on. You see no change in the applied series uh, in terms of your access. So things that we're introducing here, number one, live Q&A sessions uh, for the applied series, the last Sunday of every month. The next session is March 26th. It'll be noon to 1.30. Uh, we're starting with one session a month and we're going to see what the demand looks like for that. If it's a crowded session, I will then split it into two sessions on uh, Sunday to appeal to different time zones. If they're still crowded, I'll go bi-weekly uh, with two sessions. If that's still crowded, I will then go weekly with two sessions. Um, but this is the live Q&A sessions for the Applied series. For the CFA content, we do have live office hours uh, for particular topics uh, about six weeks out before the exam starts uh, where you can show up and you can ask any question you want, and uh, uh, as long as it's content related, our content related, and, and we'll answer it. Uh, we're thinking right now of increasing the number of those because they are extremely well attended. Uh, I mean, I can't speak for everyone who does them. I know the ones I do at level three have well over 100, uh, 100 people that show up for them uh, on, on each session. Uh, that means that we can offer more, uh, more hours and more sessions. So we're looking at expanding that. August, this is exciting. I'm, I'm excited about this. Uh, for 2023, we're picking an August start uh, for this. It is our version of a uh, practical uh, module. Uh, but you must have the applied series component uh, for this. It's not available at just a CFA. So if you buy CFA level one and only level one, uh, this is not available to you. Uh, if you have the Applied Series or the CFA Plus, uh, this is available to you. And the reason we chose August is because we have the Plus Series at Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. So we want to make sure it's available for everybody. But Level 2 uh, can't really register uh, for 2024 until mid-August. So what if somebody says, oh, but I, I, I want this, but I, I'm not registering till August. The easiest thing to do is just make it start in August. So this one will start in August. We're going to do a portfolio construction and management application using real world data. I use Interactive Brokers. Uh, and if you have an account at Interactive Brokers, you automatically have a paper account. We're going to use a $1 million uh, paper account. Uh, if you don't have access to Interactive Brokers or some other broker that has a paper account, use that. If you don't have that, I believe you can uh, uh, Google either uh, Google Finance or Yahoo Finance. I think they offer paper trading accounts as well. So you can follow along uh, with your own paper trading account. 
Uh, and we will build an entire portfolio over the course of a number of weeks, uh, starting from very simple basic setup to very complex trades. So our first week, we're going to set up all our screens. Uh, because we're going to need screens to follow rates and key fixed income uh, futures. We're going to need another screen for key Forex, another screen for key commodities that we want to keep our eye on, especially energy and copper, uh, and a screen for equities, primarily uh, ETFs that track sectors and particular sectors uh, that we might be interested in. Uh, next, we're going to determine what our investment philosophy is, and we're going to uh, list the rules that we will follow as we trade. Position sizes, uh, um, things like that, how we leg in, how we leg out. Uh, we'll start by building a basic portfolio equity fixed income in cash. I will show you on Interactive Brokers how to buy T-bills without, without a dealer. Uh, so that you never ever sit in cash, you always sit in T-bills, the increment is a thousand bucks. So if you got money in your account and it's just sitting in cash, you're doing yourself a disservice. So we'll see how uh, we put ourselves in the cash and we can pick the number of days for our T-bills, by the way. And in each week, we're going to add some complexity. Each week, uh, we're going to do some sector and factor tilts to see what that looks like. We'll engage in some carry trades, we'll build some income factories. We'll do some curve trades, whether we're doing a curve steepener or a curve flattener. We'll uh, show you how to do curve trades. Uh, and these are all done with securities that you would have access to as a retail investor. This is not specifically just for institutions. Uh, when we get to level three and we start looking at curve steepening and curve flattening trades, we think, oh, that's, that's really an institutional trade. No, you can do it yourself. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do that. Uh, duration trades and duration positions, future, uh, futures curves trades, and intercurve trades uh, as well. So we may look at two different uh, commodities and there might be a relationship between those commodities. Well, how do we build an inter-commodity uh, trade, uh, an intercurve trade? Well, we've got to pay attention to the shape of the curve and where on the curve we want to be. So we'll look at implementing some of those, uh, some curve trades and some intercurve trades. Uh, we'll take a position in a foreign equity and then we'll hedge out uh, the currency risk associated with that. So we'll, sh we'll see how we can hedge uh, our Forex position, uh, both using futures and with spot. And maybe we'll uh, do some active positions in currencies as well. Uh, and then we'll engage in some portfolio risk management. I'll show you how to create synthetic cash so that you have a portfolio of securities and you think, well, I want to go to cash. Well, you don't actually sell anything. You just create synthetic cash so that for all intents and purposes, you're basically in cash, but you do it synthetically. So I'll show you how to create synthetic cash. Uh, we'll do some hedging and we'll do some deleveraging. So that if we uh, need margin all of a sudden, I'll show you how to create margin by delevering certain positions using different derivatives to get that done. So we're going to do a lot of really exciting stuff so that when you get out there uh, in the real world, if you uh, are in a position where you do have to do something, you can say, look, I, ha I, I, I am... Uh, familiar with how to put on a uh, forex trade i am familiar uh, with how to conduct a carry trade i'm familiar with how to build an income factory i just need a target i'm can uh, i'm familiar with how to construct a carry trade and what securities i'm using to construct a carry trade you're familiar with all of these things so that it's not as if you're looking at a screen saying well well how do i how do i trade a futures contract or how do i trade an options on a futures contract do, do i buy it do i sell it what am i doing this does all of that for you. Uh, let's look at what the next thing is. Okay, in August of 2024, that is next year. So the first year uh, um, for August of 2023 for uh, the first uh, year. The, the, each of these will probably last somewhere between 20 to 25 weeks. Every week we'll do, we'll do some little thing. Uh, starting August 2024, we're going to do a financial modeling as well. We're going to use a real company, either Lennar or DR Horton. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm choosing them because they have, they have um, segments and they have fairly simple business models to understand. You know, when you start with something complex like a mortgage read or a bank or an equity read that has a whole bunch of derivatives and off-balance sheet stuff going on, that's brutally hard. But we start off somewhere simple with Lennar or uh, DR Horton. Uh, we're going to use 10 years of quarterly data. 
uh, and I'll provide that to you in a downloadable spreadsheet. Uh, all of the data will be available for you in a spreadsheet. You will then construct everything else, all the forecasts, all the assumption sheets, the segment analysis. You'll, you'll build all of that yourself, but you won't have to go and get the 10 years of data. That'll be done. Uh, we'll do a three statement uh, model, but we'll also uh, have extra tabs for each segment. We'll do some segment modeling as well, and we'll see how that builds up into the income statement and the balance sheet. Uh, here. We'll also um, see how we uh, bring in regression and time series analysis into this. For example, if we're trying to forecast home sales uh, for the market to figure out what home sales are going to be for the market, uh, we might have some hypotheses that it has something to do with the 10-year yield and the level of uh, GDP here. We'll probably use the natural log of real GDP. Plus, we may have some other, some other variables of interest that we just want to check out. Now, there are models that exist for this, but we're going to build one so that you see how these things are built, how we would get the data, how we uh, clean up the data for regression, how we run the regression, how we read the results, how we uh, 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 build our model by saying, okay, well, we have six inputs. Uh, this one isn't significant. What does the model look like with five? What does it look like with four? What if we modeled it this way? Uh, so we're going to do some regression time series. If we know what home sales are going to be and we have a forecast for what market share DHI is going to have, we then have a forecast for the number of homes, the quantity uh, at which uh, DHI or Lennar uh, uh, can uh, manage. Then we just have to figure out, well, how do we forecast pricing now? Maybe we have a different regression that forecasts the level of pricing based on what we think the economy will look like going forward, where we think rates will be, where we think the supply of housing is, the level of inventory. We'll come up with some forecast for price once we have quantity, once we have price. What have we got? We got revenue, right? Uh, then we'll do a bunch of valuations. We'll do dividend uh, discount valuation, a free cash flow valuation, residual income, and some relative analysis. So that means when we talk about relative analysis, it's versus peers, price to cash flow. Uh, price to book. Once we have our valuation, we'll determine whether or not we have a buy, a sell, or hold. Once we do that, what is our portfolio trade? And go back to what we started in 2023. You'll still have your, your paper portfolio going. We will then put it into practice. Okay, if we said sell, let's short the thing. Let's see what happens. Can we uh, short it with shares or can we find a better way to short it? Can we do a synthetic on the short? What would that look like? If it's a hold, well, then that is a beautiful target for an income factory. As soon as you have something that's a hold, we have an income factory. That is beautiful. So maybe we'll set up uh, an income factory on that. Uh, so that is 2024, and this will probably run over 20 to 25 weeks. You'll get the spreadsheet with all of the data, and then you will build your forecast. We will use some, some of the techniques at level two, like regression and time series analysis, to forecast key uh, metrics like, uh, no, sorry, key metrics, key uh, numbers like our top line revenue number, uh, and then build our sheets from there. August of 2025, and remember now the applied series does not expire. So if you uh, were a level one candidate for the first year, you will have gone through uh, the portfolio uh, construction uh, screens that I did on the previous screen. Uh, then you'll move to level two, and as you go through level two, you will have gone through the financial modeling, and then you move to level three, and you will see this in level three, quantitative portfolio construction and management. What we're going to do is create a trading system, an automated trading system. For an automated trading system, you need two, you need two things. You need a target. Well, what, what's your target going to be? You know, maybe after we're done this, we have a hold on a DHI or we have a buy on DHI. And we say, well, let's make that our target. Okay, if that's your target, what's your strategy? Uh, and then we'll have some uh, quantitatively driven strategy. The, uh, the one that I think we'll do is, a, uh, is an income factory. We'll, we'll locate a target for an income factory and then we'll automate that trade. Uh, and for uh, an income factory, what you specifically want are lots of options listed frequently. So if we can't get it at the level of a home builder, we might be able to get it at the level of the ETF, but we'll find a, an appropriate target. We'll back test our trading system and then we will deploy it in our paper portfolio that we have. Uh, and depending on the trading system that you're using, 
you may or may not be able uh, to automate it, but with, um, with uh, IB, we can put an automated trading system in the place. So those are the three years of progressions that we have in the applied series. Um, so, and again, they have, uh, they have no expiration. Uh, even if you don't pick up the applied series for a year and you say, well, I really wanted the portfolio construction, but I'm not going to be doing anything for a year, you can either just pick up the applied series component or you can wait. Uh, all of these will uh, be available in video uh, even two years after. So you can still go back to the very beginning, except the data that I would be using in August of 2023 will be August of 2023 data. So if you start watching it in August of 2025, you might say, but this data is two years old. You're, you're trading a market that's two years old. Yeah, but the process remains the same. It's just that you're looking at prices that are two years old. So if you want to do it as it unfolds in real time, uh, that would be uh, this August. One more thing to look at. One more thing. Fall of 2023. I can't tell you what month it's going to be in, but fall of 2023, we are introducing a charter holder subscription. It will have the applied series. It will have any new readings that occur from level one to level three, the new readings will show up in the charter holder subscription so that you have access to those particular videos. I know CFAI makes them available to you, makes those readings available to you uh, in your uh, when you uh, log in on their site, uh, and then you can read them and they're worth so many hours. Well, watch the video. Uh, so we will have those. Those will just be incrementally new ones per year. Yeah, the subscription is an annual subscription, by the way because these are updated uh, annually. However, the applied series component continues on. So if you get a charter holder subscription uh, and uh, after one year you say, oh, I don't want it anymore, this continues on. You may say, well, I'm not really into uh, all of that. Uh, new readings from L1 to L3. Uh, selected monograph videos. Uh, CFAI publishes uh, some really nice monographs from time to time. Uh, and they're available on their site and they tell you how many hours each one is worth. Some are worth an hour and a half, some are worth six hours. Uh, and then you uh, read through them. Well, wouldn't it be nice to watch a video uh, on those? Uh, so we'll do uh, videos on, on those. We have to be careful with those because we don't have copyright uh, permissions on those. So uh, I will construct the videos in such a way that I don't step on anybody's toes. Uh, and then this is a pretty important too, an audit trail of all the CEC hours uh, that you put in. So if it's ever questioned, you didn't do 20 hours. Well, if it's ever questioned, we can provide an audit trail uh, that says, yes, in fact, you did do uh, uh, the hours of CEC that uh, you are reporting. So this is how it breaks down. Uh, let's say you take a level one plus uh, um, subscription, uh, then you don't need to do the level two and level three plus because the plus part is the applied series. The applied series lasts all the way through. So then you pick up level two, level three, and then you can move right to the charter holder subscription, which means you don't need the applied series component of the uh, charter holder subscription. If uh, you're starting at level two, you can pick up a level two plus, then you don't need to uh, buy it at level three. You just keep going. And if you buy the level three plus, you don't need uh, it when you uh, decide you want the charter holder subscription. If you are uh, um, past level three, but you're not a charter holder yet, you can buy the applied series. And then once you receive the charter, you can get the charter holder subscription. I should have said that this is a requirement. You must be a charter holder. Uh, you must be a charter holder uh, to um, subscribe uh, to that one. Um, so uh, you only pay for the applied series component once. Uh, once you have it once, then you have it uh, the CFAI practical modules begin for 2024 candidates. Uh, the applied series practical capstones, that's what I'm calling them. There's three of them uh, each year. Uh, there's a new one each year. The practical capstones begin August of 2023 for all applied series and CFA plus subscribers. Okay, there's my spiel that I've smuggled into this informational video for you. I got to get it in there somewhere, right? Let's get back to what CFAI uh, is offering you. Okay, this one. Um, I don't know how I feel about this one. I, 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 I see its advantages, but I can see its disadvantages, and I'll try to explain both. Focus curriculum. Let's uh, just look at what we're doing uh, down here. Uh, our research indicates that most level one candidates have already mastered many introductory financial concepts as part of the university studies 
or early career role. To avoid duplication and the streamlined level one curriculum content, we have moved some of this content and we'll provide it separately as reference material for registered candidates. So what this means is, uh, let's say something like uh, quantitative analysis for level one. If, if you uh, had a, a business undergraduate uh, and you uh, focused primarily on the numbers courses, which is what I did, uh, you know, the accounting, the finance, the stats, they were easy A's, easy A's. Um, level one quant to me is, I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't need to read it. Well, not now. I mean, back then, when, if I gradu when I graduated back then, I wouldn't have needed to read it to, to know it. I mean, it means if you would have given me just the exam questions related to quant, I doubt I would have missed one. I wouldn't have needed it. So the idea that they are extracting some of the more testable concepts out of quant and placing that up front, to me, would seem like, well, that's a benefit. That's really good because that's all I really need. I don't need all that background stuff because for me, it would be like, oh, God, I know all this stuff. Um, the other thing that it does is it um, streamlines what is testable. So if you go to uh, a reading before the mod, before what they're doing here, you take a reading, uh, it has a whole bunch of stuff in there that's, that, that you need. Assuming you know nothing about this, you have this foundational knowledge that builds up to the testable concept. The question is, is the foundation knowledgeable going to be testable as long uh, as well as the built up concept? Well, this approach just says, here's the testable stuff. All that foundational stuff is in, uh, a, uh, is in some pre-readings or some prerequisite readings that you can do if you want, but if you already have the expertise, off you go. There's the advantage. Here's the disadvantage. Some candidates who do not have the background may decide that, well, I'm just going to go with the streamlined content and may find themselves struggling as they're going through. may say, wait a minute, how'd you get here? How'd you get that? How'd you get this? Well, understand something. There is an assumption that you already know all that background stuff. So if you're finding that, okay, this is written terribly. I can't follow this. I, I don't understand what's going on. This sucks. It's because it made the assumption and you went with the assumption. That assumption doesn't apply to you. So if you have any hesitation at all about it, what I would strongly recommend is you go through the real, re not the real, uh, bad choice of words there, the, the, uh, the prerequisite readings, which have all of the foundational material along with these concepts. Go through that and then use the modules as your exam review because those are just the testable concepts. So it does have its advantages in that it's not going to waste your time if you already know it. The disadvantage is you may decide that you already know it but you don't really know it and struggle with it, right? So uh, the content has been moved to pre-read uh, topics such as time value of money, basic statistics, microeconomics, and introduction to company accounts are essential building blocks for later learnings. Our research indicates that nine out of 10 candidates do not need to review this material. Uh, by not directly assessing these topic areas, we free up more time in the exam for more advanced practice concepts and more time for the new practical skills module. So that the testable concepts become uh, more streamlined, more clear. So fewer learning objectives and uh, as far as the learning objectives go, a much clearer message to you about what is testable. This this is testable. That is testable. These three things are testable. Uh, but the seven things that you would have seen before uh, are not. But they're necessary for you to understand these three. Do you get what I'm saying here? So if you're not certain about a particular topic and there are pre-reads available, I strongly recommend you go through the pre-reads. We will be making the pre-reads available. Uh, so we will have uh, the uh, module or approach. Uh, for everything. But if there are pre-reads, we will also make the pre-reads available in case you say, but hang on a second, I'm not one of these people that graduated from business school. I graduated from uh, a different uh, program. I didn't have this stuff. Well, don't worry, we got you covered. 
Uh, let's see, candidates who do not, uh, who have not had exposure to this content or simply wish to review the material during their study of the CFA Level 1 curriculum may access this content as companion pre-read materials at no additional charge. And the same thing on our site, you can access them uh, as companion pre-video material at no additional charge. They will be in there. Uh, registered candidates may also use these materials to get a sense of gaps in their knowledge and assess their readiness uh, for the program. All candidates who sit for exams in 2024 and beyond will be tested on the updated Level 1 curriculum. Uh, why did you remove content from the Level 1 exam? We remove content from the testable portion of the exam so that candidates can concentrate on the content that is highly relevant in the rapidly changing global economy and financial markets. This next sentence, I, uh, the next two sentences I think are kind of neat. This allows us to establish the base knowledge we believe is needed to begin studying for the exam. It also keeps study time to 300 hours at each level while maintaining the rigor of the program. Um, so if, if you um, have already, if you have a familiarity with this material, it yes, it does make the content lighter for you and probably requires fewer hours. But if you have not seen this material before, don't be taken in by that. That won't apply to you. Don't, don't focus on that 300 hours. That's not going to apply to you. This is going to apply to your typical business graduate that has had the mandatory courses in microeconomics and macro, in introductory accounting and introductory finance. There's always a stats course in there somewhere so that, yes, when you see level one, if you have a business undergrad, chances are about half the stuff you've seen before. You've already seen it before. It, it's important for them. This is a statistic that, that probably matters to them. But if you come to this with a history undergrad, this does not apply to you. Don't focus on that 300 hours and don't be taken in by that 300 hours. It takes what it takes, okay? And that 300 hours, by the way, is an average. That's the middle of a distribution. What would be more important from an analyst perspective is not only give us the mean but give us the standard deviation associated with those hours as well so that we can construct a 95% confidence interval. Do you get where I'm going here, CFAI? Uh, do the changes to the level one exam make it harder to pass? Uh, that's a good question too, right? We are not making any adjustments to the average. In fact, we believe that the changes, including the establishment of the knowledge needed before starting the program, will ensure candidates are better prepared to start their study and ultimately better able to pass the exam. Well, I don't know that those last two sentences mean, mean much in terms of trying to figure it out. It sounds like a politician talking, right? Um, we are not making any adjustment to the average. Basically, what they're saying is not, we're not making it more difficult. Uh, it's the same. It's the same stuff. And I, you know, I kind of, I can kind of take it like that because you know, there is, even in, in university exams, you're writing a midterm exam or a final exam, and you're looking at the material, there's about 40% of the material, it's not testable because it's foundational material for the testable concepts. So that if we got rid of the foundational material and just taught the testable concepts, the midterm and final would be the same, except the candidate uh, uh, or the student in the class would have to then be responsible for developing their own foundational knowledge. This is exactly uh, the same thing over here. Uh, practical skills modules have been added to the curriculum. If they aren't tested, why do I have to complete them? Well, we've already seen that. How is level two curriculum changed? Has not changed significantly. Well, it's gone through the same review to improve the instructional design. All current topics have been maintained. So this, uh, this uh, approach uh, is level one. Notice it says level one, questions and answers. Level one. If you're going into level two for 2024 or level three for 2024, this doesn't apply to you. If you're new to the CFA program or if you're repeating level one in 2024, this applies to you. What else we got here? Has level three changed? Not yet, with an exclamation mark. However, <laughs> not yet you can you should put that on all caps however starting in 2025 level three candidates will have the opportunity to choose to be tested on a specialization this is the other exciting 
uh, thing uh, of level three. Uh, because going through level three, I'll tell you, even myself, I find the private wealth management stuff to be super boring. Sorry, but I find it to be super boring. Uh, it's it's it just doesn't present itself as challenging and and I you know it's not my thing asset management portfolio management that's more my thing uh, but the wealth management to be like I, I'm never gonna do this you know so I'm I'm more than happy about this uh, the opportunity to choose to be tested on a specialization now the core of the curriculum will remain the same but candidates will have the opportunity to focus on a, uh, a percentage of their level three effort on one of three specialized paths, portfolio management, private markets, or private wealth management. Uh, and we are going to uh, talk more about that when we get to that section. Okay, next one here, practice pack number four. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this and then I'll sort of give you my opinion on it. Um, so we can go right down to what they're offering here. Uh, only for level one so far. I can't imagine uh, that they would uh, just stop at level one, but it seems that, you know, if you're rolling out something new, you start with level one like a tube of toothpaste and you squeeze it through till you get to level three. Six additional uh, exam quality mocks. I really can't comment on these. I haven't seen them. Uh, I doubt if I will see them. Uh, I don't know who wrote them, but test your knowledge with these mock exams, which replicate the difficulty, length, and topics tested on exam day. So that's a bold statement to start off with right away. Uh, and if we take it at its word, well, then that sounds pretty good. It replicates the difficulty. I think that is the most important thing because probably the most common question uh, I get asked is uh, how representative uh, of the exam are your exams and the answer always is well we don't know nobody knows no provider knows because we're not allowed to see the real exam so we can't benchmark where we are so you tend to default to writing questions that tend to be on the harder side because well uh, then whatever you see will be easier hopefully uh, so we nobody really knows but this is a statement replicates the difficulty uh, that is the key thing right there. Yeah, the, you know, the length and topics tested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can all do that. We can all replicate the length. We can all replicate the topics. But only they know the difficulty. So right away, that's a pretty bold statement. The exam questions are created through the same processes and by the same experts who write the real questions. Well, okay. If it goes through the same process and it's the same experts who write the real exam, why wouldn't you want those? Five of these exams will be delivered to you through the CFA digital learning ecosystem. I had read this uh, wrong when I first looked at it. I thought it was six plus one. It's six additional ones. Five of them are made available to you. And then this one, exam day experience. Practice an additional mock exam using the same software interface and time constraints you will use on exam day. I think you'd want to do that, right? You will receive explanations for the questions you missed. The mock... Well, let me stop right there. You'll receive explanations for the questions you missed. Why just the questions you've missed? Uh, why not the questions you got right? You're making the assumption when you don't provide an explanation for the question that they got right, you're making the assumption uh, that they got the question right correctly and not luckily. Uh, sometimes you can answer a question because you think, okay, well, it's this, uh, so it's A. But your logic was wrong, but you just sort of got to the same answer, but you were way off base in how you got there. So I think you'd kind of want to check your right answers to make sure that you got them right for the right reason, because what if you saw the question just slightly differently and used the same logic, you'd get it wrong. So the, the idea, the, the, the assumption here is when you provide explanations just for the questions you missed, you're making the assumption that no luck was involved in getting questions right. Well, we all know there's a certain amount of luck involved in getting questions right. Uh, mock exam will be delivered to you via uh, an online ProMetric platform that replicates the experience you will have at the exam center on exam day. Beautiful, right? 1,000 exam quality practice questions. Test your knowledge at your own pace with exam quality questions sorted by curriculum topic area. Questions are created through the same processes and by the same experts who write the real exam questions. Again, bold statements on that. These thousand questions will be delivered to you through the CFA digital learning ecosystem. 
And finally, access to the level one curriculum PDF files. Download and print for your personal use because some, some people still like the physical copy of something that they can write on, make notes, read, flip, read on the bus without always having to read on a device or something. Uh, so what do I think of this? If, if I take it at its word, replicates the difficulty created through the same process and by the same experts who write the real questions, then I would say you got to get this. You got to get this because um, there is a lot of stuff out there on the market for level one. Lots of banks, lots of mock exams, uh, many of it written by people who have no business uh, writing questions, who have no training in assessment, who are not experts in their particular field. And it's not enough to pass a test and say, well, I passed a test, I can write a question. No, you can't. You need, you need such a deep knowledge to be able to write the structure of a question properly such that there is only one answer uh, and that there are no flaws in the answer. There's a lot of misleading questions, of wrong questions, of, of flawed uh, 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 question banks out there. Uh, I mean, I went through living hell trying to build our question bank by hiring outside writers. Disappointment after disappointment. Uh, the number of mistakes, sometimes 20, 30, 40 percent error rate uh, in the questions. It's brutally hard to find a good writer. Uh, and these good questions take time to write that if, in fact, uh, this we take it at its word and this is true I think this is it right here why would you spend money on an on uh, a set of mock exams and question bank uh, from anybody else but here if this is in fact true now it would be interesting to see what the feedback is once you know for candidates who do buy this because you do have to pay extra for this but if you buy it from a provider, you're going to have to pay for it anyways. I, I know that there are some providers out there that, that just sell three mock exams uh, uh, at level one for 300 bucks. They try to sell three mock exams for 300 bucks. Well, here's this is 299, by the way. I may as well tell you the price. And you're going to get six of them. You're getting another thousand questions. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Replicate the difficulty. Only they can say that. Now, I can say, yeah, we have some, some good questions. We have a question bank. We have mock exams. Super expensive to produce, super time-consuming to write these things. But if you ask me, are these representative of, of questions on the exam? I can only say, I don't know, because they don't let me see the exam. But this is theirs. Replicate the difficulty. That that's it right there. That's it right there. That's the selling feature. Don't say all this other stuff. Just say that created through the same processes and by the same experts who write the real exam and for the thousand questions. Now, does my registration include all my CFA exam study materials? Uh, it comes with the learning ecosystem, a robust digital learning platform that includes the entire curriculum along with about 2,000 practice questions and other study tools. Uh, in addition, level one candidates will have access to two mock exams available eight weeks ahead of the exam. So you got 2,000 practice questions, two mock exams, and if you add this, you get another six mock exams and another, another 1,000 questions. Uh, how is this package supplemental? I think we know why. Is the content really exam quality? Yes. Bold statement, CFAI. You better be able to back that up because we have a thing called social media, and these people like to talk. That if, if this does not measure up, oh boy. Uh, so, you know, if you want to measure your, your feedback, just watch social media. CFA Institute uses world-class experts. I don't know who these world-class experts are. <laughs> we could never find them. Uh, maybe you want to share their names with us. Processes and statistical methods to create the CFA exam. Exam quality questions produced in this process are used in this study package. Wow, that's, uh, that's impressive. Is this content exclusive to CFA Institute? What do you think the answer is going to be? Yes! You could have just stopped there. Uh, the official practice questions and the exam day experience in this package are only available through 3 CFA Institute. However, approved prep providers have access to the full curriculum to aid their creation, study materials, and other resources. Well, we, we've always had that. We've always had access to the curriculum. This, this, this add-on here, we don't have access to. What is the cost? 
it's reasonable 299 there are some uh, providers out there who will charge you 299 just for access to their question bank and here's the thing here's the big thing they cannot they cannot say uh, replicate the difficulty they can't say that they cannot say that they use the same experts uh, to build the real exam uh, they cannot uh, say is the content really exam quality yes they can't say it because here's the thing we don't know uh, i think the questions i've written are quite good they're more rigorous than average questions yes i would say they're probably harder than what's on the exam but if i had to sit down and write questions that were equal to the difficulty on the exam for me it would be a guessing game because I don't because I don't get to see them only they get to see them so I think that's a pretty powerful statement and that's a great price right there 299 why why would you buy it from another provider I just don't understand why uh, when is this package available for purchase um, purchase at registration or any time during your study period uh, does this package replace the need for a prep provider better freaking say no prep providers are <laughs> little thread out there. I eh? better freaking say no. Prep providers offer a wide range of services to candidates, including extensive video content, summarized curriculum, their own printed versions of the curriculum, and more. The Level 1 Practice Pack is designed to complement what a prep provider can offer a more accessible price point. Um, yeah, I, I, I think they're right on that. The uh, Practice Pack, uh, you know, and I had said this uh, um, in, you know, I talked to people at CFA, and I said this a couple of years ago that, that they they should really, uh, you know, clean out the industry in this particular place when it comes to Q banks and mock exams because there's just such a, a whole bunch of wrong and misleading stuff out there. Candidates risk paying money to somebody and learning the wrong thing that they should do this, and I'm glad to see that it is done. Uh, as far as summarized curriculum, uh, once you, uh, you know. Being that you have more focused modules at level one, it is already summarized. I don't know that you need to go outside of the CFAI curriculum, and I've been saying this for years. The exam is based on CFAI curriculum only, nobody else's. It's based on CFAI curriculum only, and if they're streamlining the curriculum for you, why would you pay more for somebody else's notes that are, all, that are streamlined when you're already getting it streamlined? Uh, I think that you'd probably want to stick with CFAI for as much as you possibly can. The instructional content, the video content, that is really uh, what you're looking at a prep provider for and how much other support they provide in terms of uh, the uh, live uh, sessions that they have for tutorials, for office hours, for things like that, which we're loading up on. That's the thing that we're focusing on because that's what we think the future looks like. Uh, when will this, uh, will this package be available at all levels? Uh, practice packs for level two and level three are under con uh, consideration for a future release, but here's the deal. I, I can't see how this won't be uh, uh, successful for them at, at CFAI in terms of, um, uh, of, of additional revenue. And even though they're a nonprofit, you still got to look at that kind of thing. Uh, that it, to me, it would seem like it would be a no brainer to move into level two and level three and Here's the thing, if anyone from CFAI is listening, I really wish you would. I really wish you would to clean up uh, what seems to be just, just what I've seen in, in my time in this industry, a perpetual mess when it comes to question writers and mock exams and questions and just the sheer number of mistakes that exist out there. Uh, so... I think I've gone a little on a little too much about this, but I think it's I think it's good. I you know for two ninety nine, what have you got to lose if 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 this is a true statement? Repl replicate the difficulty because that's it right there. That's it in a nutshell right there. And if you're getting six, look, you're paying two ninety nine. You're getting six. You're basically paying fifty bucks an exam, and you're getting a thousand questions thrown in, and you're getting the level one curriculum PDFs thrown in. Why wouldn't you? I mean, why wouldn't you? Right. CFAI, uh, you might want to consider giving me like 10% of the revenue here for everything I've just said. <laughs> okay, the level three specialized pathways. I am 
super excited about this one. Let's just jump right into it. And uh, I think I'm, I know what one of your questions are going to be right off the top because it was one of my questions uh, when I looked at two of the uh, two of the pathways. I thought, but I want to do both. Let's see what happens here. Uh, so uh, I guess we'll read uh, what we have up here. Uh, the CFA program curriculum has always prepared people well for buy side jobs as we grow and develop to meet the needs of our global audience. We know that the needs of our diverse Canada base uh, grow, goes beyond the buy side. We performed a job role analysis in April of 2021, then subsequently a market analysis to determine adjacent job role sectors from which to focus the specialized pathways. Two sectors rose to the top, private wealth and private markets. For 2025 level three exams, we will introduce, this is 2025 now, so if you're registering for 2024, don't get excited. This is for 2025. Uh, Mid-May, registration for February level three opens. Uh, you're, and, and when registration for the August uh, level three opens, you're not gonna see this either. Next May, uh, if you're registering for level three, you will then choose your specialization. I know for the, the level three candidates now that are looking at 2024, after you listen to this, you'll think, oh, come on, should I wait a year? No, no, don't wait a year. Don't wait a year and I'll, I'll explain why. Just go ahead and do what you're gonna do. There's no sense putting this off for a year. Get done what you wanna get done and uh, I'll show you uh, what will be available for you. Uh, two sectors rose to the top, private wealth and private markets. For 2025 level three, we will introduce specialized pathways. Uh, two new versions of level three in private wealth and private markets uh, while also keeping our traditional portfolio management path. So you have three paths. You have the traditional portfolio management path, you will have the private wealth path, and you will have the private markets path. So when I saw, the, uh, when I saw these three, I thought, but I would want to do the portfolio management and the private markets. Well, you got to pick one. And it was like, well... Can I write it twice then? Uh, and they have a solution for that. So that's why if you're writing in 2024, don't worry that you're missing anything. You won't. If you think, well, I'll just wait till 2025, you may as well write in 2024 because, well, let's just keep reading. Candidates will be able to select a path that teaches content more directly related to their interests and aspirations. The three versions will have a common core of curriculum at level three, supplemented by specialized content for each pathways, and there is a video uh, that you can watch. Uh, can I change my mind about the pathway I choose? Uh, the pathway is chosen at the time the candidate registers for their level three exam. If a candidate changes their mind, they may call the global call center for assistance in making a change. This is the important one. Will I be able to take more than one pathway? Uh, and then the next one uh, uh, follows on. At the time of registration, a level three candidate must choose only one pathway. And it seems like that would be a hard choice, right? Uh, may uh, I add additional pathways? If a candidate or charter holder begins their career in a traditional asset management role and decides to change roles, they can come back and upskill with an additional specialization. We envision the specialized pathway content will be packaged and available to charter holders members and others as continuing education materials via our professional learning offering in the future. So don't worry about it. There's no point in putting your life on hold for a year waiting for one of these pathways. Just take it. If you take the uh, 2024, you are taking the traditional uh, portfolio management path. Then you can come back later on and say, well, I really want the private markets. I think I would want the private markets too, to be honest with you. Both portfolio management and private markets to me seem seem exciting. Private wealth, sorry for all the people who like private wealth. I just find that just a little too boring for me. But that's me, right? Uh, will the CFA uh, charter reflect the specialized path an individual earns? Kind of like a major. Um, let's see what that says here. Uh, no. There will be no distinction made on the charter itself, so they, they all look the same. Uh, we are exploring making that distinction through our digital badging strategy, and that's the next thing we'll look at is the digital uh, badging. Are you concerned that offering different paths for level three will lead to one path being easy, another medium, and the other hard, 
and that as a result most individuals choose the easy path or being perceived as such by employers. I never would have thought to ask that. Uh, well over half the content will be common across all three pathways. There is a common core, 60 to 65 percent or 65 to 70 percent is common across all three. Uh, with precisely the same bar or performance calibration for the differentiated parts, each of the three will have its own custom fixed bar, but this uh, will be set at the same height as the rest of the L3 exam. We are therefore confident about maintaining the rigor of the program through this revised and thorough approach. I would seem to think um, that um, you would do better uh, with material that you are drawn to. So if you say, you know, I, I liked level three, but I didn't like all that private wealth stuff. Well, when you don't like something, you're, you're just not, you, you, you don't invest yourself into it as much, uh, which means you probably tend to perform less well on topics you were less interested in. So if you are interested in a topic uh, and you pick a particular one, you may find that it is easier only because you invested, you, you had some intellectual investment in the content to begin with. So you may, you may say, oh, but this was easy. Well, it might have been easy because you approached it with a lot more excitement, right? So, okay, let's uh, have a look at uh, the uh, next one. All right, to set this up, um, we have to remember um, a little bit of history here. Uh, there was a time where, you know, if you've passed level one or you passed level two, you could not claim any kind of partial uh, status uh, of the charter. Uh, it was either you were a charter holder or you were not a charter holder, and that was it. So that, that there was no recognition for any partial completion of it. Either you had the whole thing or you didn't have any of it, and, and it was that simple. So the digital badges does offer... Uh, some recognition as you walk through uh, the the different levels. Um, let's see, the digital badges, uh, uh, sorry, in response to requests from candidates and employers, we will be investing in an improved recognition strategy inclusive of digital badging. Uh, this will acknowledge candidates' achievements at level one and level two. Uh, so we don't have to read the rest. You can if you want. Uh, and here's a video for it. The, the questions, uh, three questions here, they're all good. When will the new digital badges be available? We are working to deliver these badges in calendar year 2023, which uh, is the year that we're in and some 280 days left to go. So the clock is ticking on that. Will the new digital badges be available to previous candidates? We will begin with releasing digital badges, badges, for those candidates receiving exam results now, and we'll work to retrospectively offer them to pass candidates for success at various levels. There will also be digital badges and a member directory available for all the current charter holders in the coming months. And some of you out there may be saying, badges? We don't need no stinking badges, but you're going to get them anyways. See if you can name that reference. And when you name that reference, I need the name of the movie. Come on. Uh, how will you improve the visibility of the badges? Uh, we will build integrated marketing campaigns across the web, social media, and beyond to highlight visibility of the badges in the investment industry. Our global relationship management team will work with institutions, including universities and employers, to ensure there's broad awareness of and value placed on these accomplishments. So it's one thing to hand you a digital badge and say, here you go. It's another thing for an employer to actually recognize that it means anything. And what they're saying in this last statement is, look, we're going to spend some money here. We're going to spend some money and we're going to uh, promote the awareness of these badges so that when you do present one, there'll be some recognition for it. So it does have value. Uh, as as a, a credentialing tool, it does have some value. Anyways, that takes me to the end of uh, of this video. If you have questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments section. Uh, if I've said something that was confusing and I can answer a question, I will. Uh, if I can't answer it, I won't answer it because, well, me just saying I don't know, I don't know doesn't make a lot of sense. And if anyone from CFAI uh, had been watching this video, uh, maybe you want to scan the comment section and if there are questions you can answer or a link to where that question is answered, please go ahead and drop it in.
that's it for now.